Do 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 do. All right, come on, Rockfin, catch up. All right, and so as as everybody starts to file in, um, give me a minute since I'm doing it by myself. Give me just a moment to oh, turn the mic all the way down. Give me a moment to. See to get my um get the things up, all my ducks in a row. Um she got that up. Hopefully that doesn't play instantly. Okay, cool. All right. So I see John is in the building. I see Baba is here. Since I'm only seeing two people right now, and I know that is not correct, I'm going to give us a little bit more time. Unless it did not give the notifications, and everybody thought that I was done for the night. I'm definitely not done for the night. Got a lot of show left. Lots of show. All right. So give about one or two more minutes. Get in here. Meteor Dreams. Good to see you. Let's see on the rock fan. Oh, guys, looks like we have somebody's in here. But, um, as we, um, I guess I'll go on ahead and at least kind of open up the show. Not going to worry about, oh, okay, John got his. Okay, um, sorry. Yeah, I'll give it to like 30 more seconds. I don't know how to do that countdown thing. If I did, I would go on ahead and do it. That's kind of cool. Um, but, um. At the three minute mark, I will go into the topics. So, of course, I don't know if you guys have noticed. Um, well, we're going to talk a little bit about the Trump thing, the Trump shoes, um, some comments that a Fox reporter made. Uh, as you guys know, Chris is away this week. And so it will just be me. Poor pitiful, you guys have to deal with me all by yourselves. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about the Bob Marley movie. Um, I'm not um well, I'll try not to do too much spoiling. Um, although I think most of y'all kind of at least know the overview and the overtone of most of the um most of the Bob Marley stuff. Said, don't be a JD with a three hour lobby. No, 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 no. I'm not doing all that. At the most, I give a couple minutes and I get started. John says, I don't want to talk about what those fools did to Bob Marley. It was bad, is what they're doing. I, 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 you're already still in my thunder. I can't. I, I'm, okay, we'll get we'll get there in a minute. Um, but that's but John obviously knows where I'm going with this and and why I felt it was pertinent to bring this topic up um traditionally i mean i know last week we talked me and chris we talked a little bit about, about the black community and i kind of want to do a little bit more about that i wanted to dig in a little bit more on that topic um because that's something that easily can be talked about for hours and hours oh uh, and i just feel like there's a couple of more things that i want to talk about and i just kind of want to reframe the way we look at it um we often look at it from a United States focused lens and um, partially why I want to talk about Bob Marley is because a big part of his 
what he wanted to do had to do with influence in the U.S. And so that's one of the part of partially why I want to talk about that. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm pretty sure since you guys in the audience are pretty much very politically engaged, you're not going to be a stranger to this name. Um, and I don't know. I'll see if, if it looks, if my screen looks like it's going to behave and not glitch on me, I will, um, I might try to show some videos. Um, if I see a hint of glitching, I'll just kind of do this all off the top of the dome and, and not waste any time on any videos. But I do want to talk about Chris Rufo, um, um, CRT and DEI just a little bit. And then I want to get into some interesting um, statements from Eric Prince. So um, there we go. Jira's in the building. Jira says, hey, again. Um, it's just so much that I want to get into. <laughs> yeah, I, I I saw that news. For those that did not notice, uh, Nikki, Nikki Nimrata Rajahawanda. Um, lost um, in her home state, and I was just kind of waiting to hear how bad it was. So, if anybody has the um, the numbers on what the spread was between Trump and uh, and Haley, please drop that in there. I'm imagining it was going to be pretty bad, but like she had already said, that she had no intentions of dropping out after this. She plans on going all the way to Super Tuesday, which the only avenue that i can see that she's even going with this is if she's trying to go like like a michael Steele route uh those out there in the audience uh let me know if you guys remember michael Steele. he was um the um head of the rnc a couple of years back um uh black or african-american gentleman whichever nomer would you like to use um now he has went the way of republicans who reform i guess i guess we'll say reform who they are and then go on to cnn or msnbc and they kind of do their thing over there Ooh, excuse me um you need to respect for that correct spelling. Yeah, I, I don't know how you got that so perfectly, but great. Um, yeah, Michael Steele, I heard him, you know, basically, they brought him on to basically critique Republicans. Um, Thomas says, Nim lost as expected. Oh, well, Trump owns the Republican Party. A lesson for the Dems, catering to your voter actually wins last elections. But yes, speaking of catering to your voters, let's see if we can get that video to pull up. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can find that video. Um, hopefully I don't get, um, I think, I think I've been able to show Fox before. Oh, man. I know you guys have probably already heard other people talk about it. I've made a attempt to not pay attention to very many other uh, independent commentators' um, viewpoint on the whole, um, on this whole uh, comment. So, uh, yes, this is the guy. Uh, oh, MSNBC. I don't really want to use theirs. And I don't want to use one with commentary. Mm, where's it at? I wonder, was it here in this segment? If they said it in this first segment. I think it, well, yeah, I think it is in this segment. So hold on a second. All right. So let's put it on the screen. And, um, I will have to mute up for this. So for those that didn't see the video, um, we will. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. 
Y'all go on ahead and put this on the screen. Get ready to show it. But um, let's see. What were y'all saying there in the chat? Let's see, the Senate ratified the treaty in secret session in order that it will not be published on Benjamin Franklin's grandson. What are y'all talking about? I'm missing something. Not sure. American voters are 50 50. Them. So let's go on here and get into it. Let's show the clip. This weekend, hours after he launched his new sneaker line in a surprise visit to SneakerCon in Philadelphia, the gold never surrender high tops officially sold out. No word yet on if the limited supply of three hundred and ninety nine dollar kicks will be restocked. Jason, you're a fashionable guy. Uh, oh, yeah. Will you be getting yourself some Trump sneakers, bright gold so you can blend in? Not here at on the that streets? price. Holy cow. You can get them in POTUS white or T red. Um, they, they are definitely a collectible item. You know what drives uh, the Democrats nuts? Donald Trump does so well with blue collar workers that those truckers that are saying, hey, we're not going to deliver to New York City. That's the heart and soul of the Trump movement. And Democrats can't stand it. They don't understand it. They don't like it. But they try to fight back with these stupid op eds that make no sense. Yeah, again, uh, Raymond, warping American politics, mega bad. You know, Dark Brandon has told us that time and time again, mega bad. But do you think this is actually pushing Trump supporters to be more enthusiastic in their support when they're constantly called deplorable, mega, radicalized, you name it? David French's piece in The New York Times, frankly, is a little cuckoo. I mean, he talks about these mega threats and how it's unraveling society. I've got a couple of people I'd like David French to talk to, uh, Justice Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, and pro I to somehow throw all of that at Donald Trump's feet, even with those gold. He somehow survives, which must drive his opponents crazy, because even the sneaker thing, I was on social media last night. Very interesting, as you see black support eroding from Joe Biden. This is connecting with black America because they love sneakers. They're into sneakers. They love the, you know, this is a big deal, certainly in, in the inner city. So when you have Trump roll out his sneaker line, they're like, wait a minute, this is cool. He's reaching them on a level that defies and is above politics. The culture always trumps politics. And Trump understands culture like no politics. True. Uh, it's brutal to have to listen to. Um, I almost thought about buying a pair, not because I just want some, because I know that Trumpers are dumb enough that they're going to go and buy that shit no matter what price I sell it for. Um, it was tough watching. Um, actually, let me switch that view. Make that small. How do I move that around? Anyway, I could do that another time. I guess it... The frustrating thing about it is when you actually know how much shoes like this actually cost, they don't cost very much. Um, I'll switch back that view. Let's see. They don't cost very much to make. Actually pretty cheap. Um, and I just think that they're so freaking ugly. Um, another thing. Um, that's what I'll do. Solo. Pop myself up. It's so frustrating when you hear these conservatives say shit like that. And you could just look at the guy. Does he look like he has the pulse of any black people at all on any on any topic? And to think just because Biden's support is going down, that does not mean that okay, so Democrats are going black black people have to vote. So if they're not going to vote for him, they're going to vote for Trump. That it doesn't work that way. Does not work that way. Um, for one, also sneakerheads like nice shoes. Those are ugly as dog shit. Somebody want those ugly ass shoes. If if black people, if if Republicans want to, and, and I already know they they love to do this whole, and the Democrats was the party of slavery and blah 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 all that nonsense. Okay, yeah, they were, 
But um, all you got to do is get on social media and you can see how plenty of white Republicans feel about black people. And it's not very positive. So you can you can save all that. The Democrats were the party or the Klan, whatever. The reason why the Republican Party struggled so hard for black voters is you basically show majority of Republicans show that they don't like or respect black people. Period. And and that goes on to what we'll talk about later on with some of these other people. The fact that he thought the shoes are going to bring people over to vote. For one, the people, a lot of the, the sneakerheads are more worried about fashion and pop culture. They're not worried about elections. Elections is so, it, it's like so far away from what they're thinking. And this brings me back to like the whole Taylor Swift stuff with the Super Bowl. These people on the right think every little thing has to do with elections. Everything is about another voter for the Democrats or the Republicans and not realizing some of this shit has nothing to do with Democrat, Republican, Biden, Trump. Some of it has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the other. As you guys can see, all those ones who were thinking, oh, well, Taylor Swift is going to make some big announcement and, and for Biden, that didn't happen. Also, on the so-called left, which, I mean, that's a misnomer, and we'll get it, get more into that later on when we talk about um, the, the next topic that I want to get into. It, it's just... It's so frustrating when you hear these people who you know have no respect for black people sit here and think, oh, well, if we do this, this will get them to vote. Sneakers, really. He And he's just releasing them. In fact, how do we even know that he released them? How do we know this isn't just somebody who was part of his campaign people who decided this would be something cool? Or this is just a ply for him to make some more money. This guy, the same one who just made that that commentary, and let's 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 put it back on the screen. Um, we we can show it. We can show it again. What this guy had had to say. So let's see. Hop over here. Let's take it back a second and let this idiot finish saying what he was saying. Waste Trump's politics and Trump understands culture like no politician I've ever seen. Question for you on that. He's reaching them on a level that defies and is above politics. Roll out his sneaker line. They're like, wait a minute, this is cool. He's reaching them on a level that defies and is above politics. The culture always trumps politics. And Trump understands culture like no politician I've ever seen. Question for you on that point, though. Yeah. Will the people that are excited about the sneakers and excited about Donald Trump Will that translate into them going out and voting for Donald Trump? Well, anybody willing to put 400 bucks down for a pair of sneakers? Yeah, I think that's commitment and love. I it's hope something. You're right. It's something. It's affection on, on some level. I, I don't think this is just for collectors. It's for people who want Donald Trump brand sneakers. That, again, he's connecting on a different level. And, and uh, that. I hope he brings new voters into the fold, though, because I have a feeling the people that are going to go buy the $400 sneakers were probably going to vote for Trump anyway. So that's my concern. How, oh, yeah, well. how does he get new voters into the fold? That's my concern. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe. Uh, no, we won't click nowhere, which, I mean, at least... Um, at least Tommy Lahren is smart enough to understand. And, and I guess she didn't want to completely like <laughs> Pee Wee Gone MAGA. Yeah, that's a that's a great one. He does fucking look like Pee Wee Herman. But um when you really think about it, um it it's just idiotic. And um I heard somebody else say, um, I think Amazing Lucas was saying it. Um, because he's the one where I where it even caught my attention. That um, the, the the we're the only the black community is the only community that they do this kind of shit with. The only one. They're not gonna come out and and and, and make a Bonda album, 
to try to appeal to the Mexican community, are they? No, they're not. And they're going to dress up in kimonos and then try to appeal or, or make a Trump kimono for the Japanese community. What up, Otris? Um, Maybe Charlemagne the God got through to Tommy Lauren at least a little bit. Eh. Well, what did it see? The, here's the thing. It's not about getting through to her. Tommy Lauren is actually, um, she's actually a lot smarter and, and understands. It's just that these people, these people are very manipulative. That's the problem with most of these people in the political space. And I mean, that goes into like the conversation I was having with JB earlier. Um, shout out to JB and RBN. Um, I said early on about Cornell West that I felt like Cornell West is a lot smarter than he's letting on and he knows what he's doing. And I could kind of go into that and elaborate if y'all want me to remind me later on and I'll, and I'll, and I'll bring that up. Um, but I feel like these people understand what they're doing. The, um, that guy though, the, the 50 something, 60 something year old, Republican conservative, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. They're talking out of their ass. Um, and they're they're saying what they hope will work. In, in no reality is Trump's shoes going to engender black people to want to fucking vote for Trump. The people who are, who are buying those $400 pairs of shoes, if they got $400 to buy a pair of shoes, more than likely they're about to buy some Jordans instead. They're not about to go spend that on those unless they're just buying it because they're a collector and they want to have it because they know it'll be worth a lot more later. But they're not buying it because, oh, I need to have this Trump brand logo. And that goes on. That's the same thing with people believing, oh, well, Trump can possibly he has the people of New York. And because they show a, a handful of black people that say that they want to vote for Trump on camera in the Bronx. They think that that's a possibility that that's going to swing the tide and everybody's going to go for Trump. Ah, I don't know. Thomas said they know they have uh, most black people's votes, so they feel the need to cater to their needs in a close election. Dems will cater hard for Latinos, uh, natives and other vote. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm talking about Dems will do it. I'm saying that Republicans wouldn't dare, you know, do it that way. Um, and, and here's the thing we all know black people, will, well, Republicans spend their whole time gaslighting and telling us that the shit that you say you're experiencing is not real. You're making it all up. You're just a whiner and a complainer. Um, or you don't actually know what's going on. It's Soros has brainwashed you into believing that there's a problem when there really isn't a problem. Yeah. Uh, well, Republicans don't um Republicans don't. Well, well, some of they they Thomas, they will in certain times they'll they'll pander, but they're not going to actually do anything. They're not going to actually say, well, this is what we're going to do to um try to ensure that you guys will vote for us. Um because they don't care enough. Republicans have won elections without ever having to depend on the black vote. They're just, it's almost like, it's almost like you're winning a fight and you decide, you know what? I want to knock this person out with an uppercut. So I'm going to keep setting up until I get that uppercut and that'll make it the perfect victory. Republicans are not counting on black people to win an election. They just want to be able to get a sizable percentage so that they could wave it in Democrats' face. It's like, ha ha, we got the blacks. Because to both of these parties, black people are nothing but a political football when it really comes down to it. Um. So, oh, oh, and the guy was talking about Trump gets the culture. Trump gets white culture. That's the culture he gets. He understands white people. He understands white people that'll vote for him. But he definitely don't understand anybody else's culture. Um, let's see. That one was able to work. So 
let me roll on to this next topic because I feel like it, it kind of fits in with what we're talking about. Jerry says, yeah, the, that Faustian bargain that was made on Jekyll Island was the beginning of all the bank. Well, yeah, that's, I don't know what y'all are talking about, but yes, that's correct. Um, let me see if I can pull up this article. I might not even actually read it, but, um, because it's so wordy and it doesn't really get to the point, but it'll just allow me to put, allow me to put this knucklehead's face on the screen while I chit chat about him. Um, for those who have kind of wondered where the whole CRT and, um, where the whole CRT and the um and uh, what is it uh, DEI where, where all this came from all of a sudden? Look no further than Christopher Rufo. This is the conservative strategist who, after being um, given a platform on Tucker Carlson's show that has pushed this in the minds of most conservatives. And this article here by, what was it the New Republic, I believe? Let's scroll back up. What's it? Yeah, the New Republic. Um, so Christopher Rufo's troubling path to power, his incoherent attacks on critical race theory are only one part of a much larger plan for a counter revolution. I mean, this man himself, one of his tweets came out that he doesn't really care about critical race theory, DEI, any of that stuff. This is just something that he's fostered that he decided this will be an easy target to go after. And so a lot of he's already starting off arguing from a. He's already starting off arguing from a, a, a faulty position. This is somebody who has an agenda. Um, CRT says, uh, oh, Chris says, CRT comes from Derek Bell. He wrote uh, wrote the book on CRT. But yes, Christopher Rufo is a made racist. Um, actually, CRT goes even before Derek Bell. Um, was it uh, Marcuso um, who came over from Germany? Um, he was one of the first people to really start writing about uh, critical race theory. Um, and that came from his experiences that he was dealing with um, in, in Germany during World War II. Oh, I meant mad racist. Yeah. Um, I definitely believe the guy is racist. I, without a doubt in my mind, he's just, and like I said about the, um, the Tommy Laren. The younger group of these GOP people who are coming up now are 10 times smarter than the people who are these Democratic strategists, 10 times smarter, because they're able to say something that they know they're being deceptive, know they're not being truthful on, and make it sound convincing. And yes, exactly, Kat. Marcuse wrote uh, wrote about repressive intolerance, which this is what a lot of these people suffer from. They and and this is why and and honestly, I feel like what he's doing is actually dangerous. That's the reason why I felt like we should bring up this guy. This is the one who's putting the battery in the back of all the Republicans. This is the one who's fighting the whole woke wars. This is the one who um who was behind pushing out um pushing gray out at Harvard. Or I mean gay. Was it uh Marcy? I'm sorry, I'm screwing up on names right now, but um pushing gay out as a uh, president um at Harvard. It's been this guy. This guy has been the one who has been behind the laws in Florida with DeSantis. This guy has also, also been involved with the um, getting rid of affirmative action. 
um, at, at college levels. And some people can say, well, why is he doing this? Is it is it that he really fears CRT this badly? Is it that, I mean, his book that he wrote talking about how the, um, his book that he wrote talking about how the left is winning on everything. For one, what the hell do you mean by the left? The Democratic Party is not left. It is moderate Republican. I mean, and and this goes into, I know that people like him are smarter than this. I know this, but they're just, as, as, as uh, Lucas would say, amazing Lucas, a lineage of evil. These people know that they're lying. They know, and what they're doing is they know that they're, they've been swinging the, um, what is it called? Um, um, you guys know what I'm talking about when you're swinging the, um, political spectrum. Hey, game.film. What's up, brother? Um, uh, what is it called? I can't remember what it's called when you're, when you're moving the political, um, spectrum and, and the debate. Um, I'm blanking on it, but somebody will remember what it's called. This is what he and many Republicans have been doing. They have been pushing the, um, they've been pushing, there we go, the Overton window. Thank you, Oz. He's pushing the Overton window. This is what they've all been doing. This is what their goal has been to continuously push the Overton window. Um, people like Matt Walsh, who is very far right, has gotten people to be convinced that, no, I'm just, uh, I'm just a conservative. I'm just the right. And what the right has done is made it seem like, no, it's the everybody else is so, so far, far to the left. When they're arguing people like Nancy Pelosi or the left, this is how you and they know for a fact the only difference between Nancy Pelosi and a lot of these uh, a lot of these elected Republicans. The only difference is uh, Nancy Pelosi is like. Uh, that they push for abortion. That's pretty much the difference between a lot of these people that they're calling far left and and their um I say I would say as far as LGBTQ and abortion, those are pretty much the things which separate everything else. And then they'll say, and the woke stuff. For one, there is not like some the left is not the America basically has no left. The the people who consider themselves progressives and all that would be considered to the right in most countries around the world. We don't we don't have a when and they th they throw those terms on it the radical left. There is no radical anything. There's no radical left. There are people who talk about it, but none of those people have any kind of power at all. Zero. There, and, and what it is, is the right has been able to influence their party and move things. And so what they're seeing is now, if we just keep saying that everything is moving further to the left, we can keep moving things further to the right, because that's really what's happened. Politically, there have been more people on the left who have talked about some of this LGBTQ talk, about, I, culture war. That's basically what it is. They've talked more about culture war stuff. They complain about the DEI and CRT and businesses. But it's not because some some Democrat or radical left is going there and forcing these corporations to do it. It's corporations, excuse me, are deciding to do these things on their own. And a lot of times where it's coming from is somebody who might not even be very political filing lawsuits and a lot of their legal departments are telling them to do or take certain steps to protect themselves. It's not because, Oh, the left is influence. It's not no political. It's not like you have some think tank out of DC that is making these corporations do any of this stuff. But what you see is a very coordinated front 
from the right, which is pushing a lot of these uh, a lot of these things. This country, as far as culturally, you can say that culturally, what you might want to call left culturally, it, which that's kind of not a thing in most other places, um, maybe here and like the UK that they would say culturally left, but in most other countries that, that just doesn't exist. There's not a cultural left, a cultural right. That's something that's unique and made up in American politics um, or a cultural right, because in a lot of these places, they're either very secular, i.e. what you will see in some of the, uh, the Nordic countries, a lot of them are very secular. Um, so whether they're the right or the left, a lot of them tend to be atheist. So abortion is something that they, they kind of, that's not a left or right issue. Just like when you get down into a lot of places in South America, which tend to be a little bit more religious or a lot more religious, those people are not left or right. The left or right depends on your economic vision for a country. If you're more of a capitalist. If you were more um, fascistic as far as the the government and corporations being more intertwined, whether you are um, democratic socialist or a social democrat or um, or an actual communist, it, all of these things are different variations, and they don't actually go into this. Oh yeah, streets. Uh, I, I hopped onto a different live, so yes, I am live. Um, let me go back up and read some of your comments because I got on a little bit of a mini rant. Um, this is the thing politicians learn that that you only need a narrative to influence the people, but they've gone so far. It's all fair tales now. Very good point, Oz, because that's what it is. They are just shifting narratives. And Christopher Rufo has become one of these that have really pushed the envelope on these narratives. If he didn't, if he wasn't pushing this whole CRT stuff, do you think that um, we would be dealing with Charlie Kirk making some of the racist statements that he's been making? Well, well now I got to worry about if a black pilot. You think that Candace Owens would be making these comments when when there's a, a, a safety issue with these planes? No, they wouldn't be doing it. But they're making these. They're thinking about this because this Rufo guy is putting this in their heads. And so this is another thing which cracks me up. That one guy in the last segment, the uh, which Thomas said looks like a uh, a MAGA Pee Wee Hermit. Let's see. I, I know we don't like LGBT, but the conservatives will come for them and then back to black people. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I agree with all, all the stuff you're saying there, but what, what I'm saying is that they don't, they don't really, they, they, Republicans are playing with the narrative because they've been able to control and Democrats have always been behind on things. Chris Sage says, apparently I hear BlackRock and Vanguard uh, pushing DEI CRT on other businesses to meet ESG scores. That's what conservatives say anyway. Conservatives are wrong about that. They're not pushing. Here's the thing. If BlackRock and Vanguard own majority of the corporations, how are they pushing it on other corporations? They're not pushing it on other businesses. They're pushing it on their businesses. And the reason why is if you have um, if you have somebody who gets into and, and this is what's been happening. This is what conservatives, this is the part which they don't talk about or understand. When somebody gets in there and they're looking at the board and they know that, oh, OK, well, I'm seeing that you are intentionally not hiring any women. You're intentionally not hiring um, any other minority groups or minority groups to America. You're not hiring any black or brown people. And there are ones who are applying who are qualified. Lawsuits are coming out when people are, are one, one of us are creeping up to that level and starting to see you're not hiring people. You're intentionally not hiring these people and it's getting corporations in trouble for doing that. So what is happening is a lot of these larger companies, which have legal departments, are saying, make sure to get one or two in there so you're covering your ass. That's all this is about. It is not about changing a whole workforce into black or white or whatever. It's not, it's not, um, that's not what's happening. 
But another thing that throws people off is then when you see like Bob Iger for Disney and they start, you know, taking certain characters and then making that into a black character, you're giving people who are just looking for something to complain about a reason to complain and how they, how they work is um, the right is almost to a degree on some things hive minded. That's the reason why also they're able to get through their message because they all pound the same message over and over and over and over. And they're all saying virtually the same thing. So everybody on their side of the fence is saying and thinking exactly the same damn thing. That is a big part of how they push this out and how they they really drill down on the on these narratives, which they do. It ain't the right, the the, the left or Democrat, because here's the thing. Outside of elected officials, when it comes to people who would be left. There are people who consider themselves moderates, centrists. There are people who um, maybe they are a little bit more to to the right as far as economic issues. But when it comes to uh, and, and plenty of Democrats consider themselves capitalists. So I don't get how they think, oh, because this person is about LGBTQ. Now that makes them a Marxist. And that's something which Rufo uses these these terms, Marxism. Um, and he, well, Marxism is his favorite one he likes to go to because he knows Marxism evokes um, it evokes the feel of uh, socialism and communism. And he know those are buzzwords for a lot of conservatives that only know that this thing is bad. I don't like that thingy. So he says the words, which he says shit that they don't, most conservatives don't know what the hell communism is or socialism or democratic socialists. They just know anything that is a Democrat, anything that's the left of them is, is evil and bad. That's their thinking. Anything that's left of them. It doesn't matter if it's even mildly. That's the reason why a lot of these Trumpers some of them, some of the stuff that Trump was talking about while he was running would be stuff that would could fall on either side of the aisle. But if Trump says it's to the right, if Trump says it's a conservative thing, now it's a conservative thing because most MAGA people are fucking lemmings. That's what it actually is. Let's see when we caught up. Chris H says, do dissidents and Kurt Mexer are um are all on this DEI issue. And they almost sound like Charlie Kirk. Well, that's part of the problem which we have with many white commentators. They they live so much in their own bubbles that they don't realize the realities that other people are facing. I mean, for instance, when I used to work at um when I worked at Lowe's. And I found out this kid with nothing but basically a high school diploma, 18 years old, walks in. I had been working there for off and on about 10, 11 years. And a kid right out of high school is able to make more than me who has college experience, who, um, who has military experience, who's worked there for, for roughly about, well, at that time, maybe about eight, seven, eight years. I worked there, worked in multiple departments, and you just bring this kid in with no experience and then pay him more than me. That's, or you have people where they're automatically promoting a, another white kid just because this is what the DEI is about. And a lot of these people don't realize when it comes to this DEI, it's not saying just hire any random minority they first have to be qualified. They first have to be qualified. If they're not qualified, they're not getting the job. So when Charlie Kirk made that dumbass um, rationale about, well, I, now I'm worried to get on a plane because I don't know if it's a DEI hire. You're an idiot. That's what you are. It's the same as what I heard with when, when the whole birther thing that was going around. It's the same thing. If, for me to join the military, they're literally going all the way back and talking to my elementary school teachers. 
and asking info on that. You really think somebody's going to become president and have to go through less scrutiny? You think that none of their campaign opponents that went against them were investing, you know, with private eyes to dig up every bit of dirt that they could try to find? And you think that they couldn't find nothing. But now when they're president, oh, well, we'll find out that he faked his way all the way to office. But this is what you get when you deal a lot of times with people from the right. It's not grounded in common sense. They just, I suspect that because I suspect it. And nobody ever pushes back and, and makes them go through the thought experience of explain this out for me. Explain how this person made it through all these other levels without question. But when you have people who want to believe in a conspiracy, they're going to believe in it no matter what. Yes, Black Gar uh, BlackRock and Vanguard own, uh, and State Street. Yeah, BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, and um, Berkshire, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, they own like 98% of everything. Um. Those are the corporations which kind of run a whole lot of the world, and they're the ones who are deciding to do this on their own accord. They're the ones who fund the politicians. So, do you think it's the politicians and it's the left who's forcing the company to do it, or do you think it's the company doing it on their own? That's the thing. If you want to go boycott these companies because you don't like the mentality of whatever that CEO is, then, then, okay, do that. But quit with this stupid, the left, the left, the left nonsense. It's just idiotic. But I, I've just learned that when you're dealing with these people over there, logic doesn't matter. It's like with the Super Bowl thing, people made a thing about, oh, well, they, they, they cheated by moving the down. They 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 gave the Chiefs a whole new set of downs. If you look down at the field, they didn't even change the markers. They didn't move anything. But a lot of people make these assertions, and they're so ready to prove their theories that they don't take the time to research anything. That's the reason, like, and a, a story. I learned my lesson with the Jesse Smoulet thing. I instantly was like, oh, this is messed up. What happened? Just to come back and really think about it. Wait a minute. You want to go get a, a Subway sandwich at 2.30 in the morning? Subway's not even open. And you start. And um, also, who the hell is going to keep a noose around their neck for a couple of hours for the police to come there and see it? That, that, shit like that didn't make sense. And so this is what and this is one thing. Um. Ryan, I love that um, um, Ryan Christian from Last American Vagabond. I love when he does this. With this stuff, he's like, ah, I, maybe it could be, but I mean, and, and, and he's willing to like push back and debunk a lot of these theories that everybody just jumps to. Um, They jump to these theories without ever really truly thinking anything through. And then next thing you know, it, it, it spread like like wildfire. Everybody is saying this 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 silly scenario. Um. So, do, 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 do. um. I remember my corporate days. It was travel war all the way. Um. Let's see. We got on rock fan just to double and check over there. On the peeps. Okay, no comments over there, so I can keep rolling. Um here we go. Hop back over. Um but back back to what I was saying about this Chris, uh Chris Rufo. When you really look into him and it, and it's interesting, his YouTube channel, he put it up, I think about 10 years ago. The first video you can find is from like four years ago. And I found it kind of strange that it's a little clip of a trailer and like something else. Like the first first two videos on there are only like a couple minutes long. But yet it's like 15,000 views and the other one's like 150,000 views, which that's weird. 
that means that somehow this guy is already built the following, which that tells me more than likely. Um, either he was doing something before and the powers that be behind him that are backing and then propping him up have scrubbed all of his stuff. So you can't find out what the hell he was talking about before now. You can't find out who he was. And what that says to me is this guy is an obvious plant. This guy is an obvious plant. Now, I don't know if it's, uh, I, I would say that he's a plant from, you know, of course, the Heritage Foundation. They probably sat there and they've been grooming this guy up and then just threw this product out there and made sure um, all of their people in the Heritage Foundation and um, all the others who they interact with hopped on to his pages and got him his views and got him into the algorithm. And they pushed this guy. I believe that Christopher Rufo is 1000% astral turfed. And if you look into it, the whole, when you really listen to him interview after interview, his goal is about going after the school systems. It's not even necessarily even about CRT. It's about trying to take down public education. He wants to take down higher learning also, but what that, but what it leans to, because it, it didn't make any sense to me. What it leans to is this is somebody who is kind of like, I don't know if maybe Betsy DeVos or somebody like that has something to do with funding him, but this guy is just about getting charter schools. I didn't even know that. Charter schools, like it was that much money behind something like this. But when you look into him, that's his big push. And he doesn't only want charter schools from K to 12. He's trying to get more private colleges and strip down a lot of the public colleges and um, and the so-called elite schools, the Ivy Leagues. And more than likely because somebody who is funding him is trying to either prop up their college, which is already out, which is not getting enough steam, or they're trying to open up that void to be able to fill it and make money off of it. So that's what I wanted to talk about with this Christopher Rufo and critical race theory. And this is where this is what this guy is ultimately about. Um, I'm pretty sure people will be able to find more information on him later but you know that's what i wanted to bring up about um christopher rufo um let's see where is that other one and i brought up a, i had a couple of videos but i'm not gonna i'm not going to risk it um i'm not gonna risk um getting stuck because it is just me and it'll be a pain in the ass to go in and fix all this stuff. Um, just trying to see what else do I have here. Okay, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Oh, yeah. And weird news. Kind of a weird sidetrack. Um, Catholic Church in Spain suspends priests um, alleged to be involved in Viagra sales. Just thought that was something weird that I can throw out there. And um, I don't know, you guys look into it and see what you can find. Um, Thomas says, uh, keep people dumbed down um, to keep a sheeple. This is what all the indoctrination, fear monger, and anti CRT dribble was about. I mean, and they say that, oh, it's about hate. Honestly, no, what it, what it, what you will create is you will create a real division if you don't teach this stuff. Because if you think this information is not going to come out, this is what I, I, I look at these conservatives. You think this information is not going to come out at some point in time. You're fooling yourself. And what will happen when this information comes out? Now you are going to have a true divide that is not going to be uh, a middle ground to try to work out. Now you're going to have black people who are going to have 10 times more hatred and distrust um, uh, uh, of of their white counterparts. At least if you're able to learn about it and teach about it, we can talk and learn it together. But when it looks like you're hiding the information, 
then it's a problem. It's kind of like a guy, he comes home, a girl gave him a girl gave him a number. He didn't solicit the number. He didn't ask the girl for the number. She gave it to him. But he doesn't mention it. He doesn't throw the number away. He gets home. His wife is going through his shit. And she finds a phone number. Now it's a problem. But if he would have tried to say something and mention, it's the same thing with this situation. Trying to bury this information. All it's going to do is when young black kids grow up and they find this information out later, they're going to have far more distrust for society as a whole and for a lot of white people because they're going to look back and realize, oh, it's the Christopher Rufos, the DeSantis's, the Governor Abbott's. These are the ones who are trying to hide this information. Yeah, Chris a says, um, so Christopher Rufo is mobilizing conservatives falsely to destroy education system they rely on. Well, yeah, I mean, but here's the thing. He wants them to, I mean, some could even say that it's trying to harken back to the civil rights era when um, a lot of the black kids were um, being integrated into schools. And a lot of the white parents started moving their kids out into private schools. And some can say this is what he's trying to do. I honestly feel the moment you get these charter schools in and it becomes the thing all over the place, what will happen is the whole school choice, all it's going to do is allow school to get more and more and more pricey. And the situation you have on the elite levels with legacy um, students and how you know, like these, some of these people who pay tuition to their kids and, you know, it gets all expensive and they're trying to do this and do everything they can to get their kid into the best elementary school to set up their future. Now you're going to do this to all kids on all grade levels. And that little bit of money that they're going to give you to go to whatever school is not going to matter because the the cost of these schools are going to inflate massively. This goes back to what Reagan did when Reagan decided these college kids need to pay something. They don't need to be getting away with hardly pay, uh, hardly paying anything to go to college when he was governor of California. When he put that in, that's what led to the the current like situation of colleges being extremely um, overpriced and expensive. And this is a conservative who wants to push that same problem of debt and all that onto the public uh, public system also. So, I don't know, just a little food for thought. Um, just a little food for thought. I wanted to bring it up because I felt like it was important to, to put that out there. And I know we don't necessarily talk about it on here, but especially since I feel like it's going to be more negative towards the Black community as a whole, Last week of Black History Month, figured I should put that out there. Um, let's see. What do I want to go into now? That one, I, I do got to share a clip. Um, I got to share the clip. So let me get this on the screen. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. Not that one. Not that. There we go. That's not the right one. That's Adam 22, which I guess I can't throw that in there real quick. And this dude came out of nowhere. Doesn't come from a hip hop background. Got a quote unquote hip hop platform and got these dudes. These For those who don't know who this is, what we're talking about here. Um, I didn't mean to pull this clip up, but I figure I'll show it anyway. For right now, this is Adam 22. And for those who know about Vlad, it's kind of the same thing. Guy who, I mean, I guess Vlad was at least a DJ and got, so, got a little bit of fame there. But he he has a platform basically in black spaces and a lot of their in interviews tend to do nothing but i i feel are tend to be negative towards a lot of the black community um 
And just so happens that there are some reason people like Adam 22 and Vlad seem to skyrocket in the black community and are able to like hold these platforms. It's just interesting. Um, this person here who was sharing this says um, he's a plant a, and he's massaged. Stop letting these culture vultures eat off of us. And he's certified cuckold. <laughs> I know it was Adam um, Grand Mason, a.k.a. Adam 22. It's an industry plant shaking my head. Yeah, I like these. Uh, soon it will come to these people. Um, but here, let me play this for you. Yo, did you know that Adam 22's real last name is Graham Mason? The same white man that got these black people on his platform beefing and banging on each other. And not only that, but did you know that his father was a local politician and went to prison for voter fraud and got pardoned by Bill Clinton? So their name is Graham Mason and they tied in with the Clintons. And this dude came out of nowhere, doesn't come from a hip hop background, got a quote unquote hip hop platform and got these dudes these gangbanger dudes going at each other on this platform. Just make sure you do your homework on this devil before you crash out for him. So I figured that'd be just a little bit of fun. Yeah, that's the dude from No Jumper. Um, Tariq Nashi and Riza Islam have been on this show many times. Yeah, a lot of black people, a lot of People have been on his show. Um, and I always thought it was weird when I start seeing people like him who skyrocket to the top out of fucking nowhere. Um, but I figured that was some hip hop news Chris Chris might enjoy. Hopefully I'm doing him proud by um throwing some info like that out. Um what was the let's see, what was it I was gonna find? Oh, oh, that's where where it was. Let me see if I can find this real quick. Hopefully I can find this and it's a short one. Yeah, the comments recently that Eric Prince made was just mind boggling. That I, I'm like, I can't believe this dude just said this. Um Let's see if I can find a short one. Mm. Yeah, I'm not in love with them, but uh, I guess I'll show it. I'll show theirs. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Not gonna do that. I'll go into. Uh, I don't like him either. Oh well, I, I'm gonna use it anyway. Yes, I am not a fan of um, Roland Martin. No, no, I don't want no extra perks, nothing. Um, actually, no, back out of that, back out of that. Did I have it? Oh, that's right, I don't have it on the screen. So, now that tie from um, the CRT. And Betsy DeVos over to her brother, Eric Prince. Let's go into what he was talking about. What we know about uh, the history, the history of white folks abusing the continent of Africa. We know about the Berlin Conference where literally they got together and split up Africa and said, well, who's going to take different parts? We know about King Leopold killing more, killing more people. Let me be very clear, killing more people in the Congo than Hitler killed Jews in Europe. We can go on and on and on how the French and for those who don't know how many, it's estimated that he killed somewhere 
not only killed and he enslaved and he, that's not even going into how many that he um that he mutilated because he chopped off arms and legs and a lot of times he did that as a threat to their parents chopping off their kids arms and legs um and this is somebody who's not talked about very often in a lot of public education um king leopold which um the holocaust the numbers they say is six million he killed roughly around 15 million conservative estimates how the british how the united states all of these countries raped and pillaged the continent of Africa. Now we have the caucasity of Eric Prince, the founder of Blackwater, the largest private military company in the world. He actually said this in a recent interview. All this, all this talk of illegal migration in Europe, in the United States, it ultimately comes down to a contest of what is governance. Who is governed, which countries are governed well. And if so many of these countries around the world are incapable of governing themselves, then, then it's time for us to just put to just to, to put the imperial hat back on to say, we're gonna govern those countries if you're incapable of governing yourselves, because enough is enough. We're done being invaded. Because our own national security risk is at stake. Exactly. National security interests are at stake. You can say that about pretty much all of Africa. They're incapable of governing themselves and benefiting their citizens because the governments there are all about looting and pillaging and lining their pockets and going shopping in Paris instead of actually right, hold on a second. Country hold on. Better, People better on the land. left are going to watch this. They're going to say, wait a minute. Eric Prince is talking about being a colonialist again. Absolutely. Yes. Enough. Because I, I, you, if you go to these countries and you see how they suffer under absolutely corrupt, made up governments that are just criminal syndicates. The people of Africa, the people of Latin America, a lot of them deserve better. Now, some countries are really getting it together. Look at what El Salvador did. Bukele. OK, that's enough. That's enough. But you guys get the point. This piece of walking human waste. Is literally telling. Yeah, I think we should go in because they deserve better. No, what they deserve is for Americans and Western countries to leave their country alone, to leave the continent alone. That's where the problem lies. You're blaming them for the status of their country when all you do is steal and take from them. Steal and take from them. And then you yourself, back in your Blackwater days, help coup some of these governments. The, the gall. This is why, oh my God. When, when people sit there and they talk about the devil and devil. No, there's the devil right there. There's a devil right there. An evil, evil man. You know what you have done inside of these countries. You know what the governments are doing. And then you want to sit there and pretend, oh, it's just the Africans are just, they don't know how to get it together. I guess we need to go in there and take over. No, you want to go and take over because you want to, you want to exploit these countries and these nations even more than you've already done. Let's see what Chris say here. It says, man, it's a good thing you brought this up, Marcus, because I just realized the U.S., could use the migrant crisis, like Prince said, to launch new wars in Africa. This is what they plan to do. This is why people like him are already talking like this, because this is already the plan. And the, the only thing that's stopping them, and, and, and this is, this is an inconvenient truth, which I had like a disagreement with, you know, with other content creators, which I, 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 I happen to like. Um, if Africa is say, you know what, just push everybody out. We'll do it on our own. How long before these Western countries come in and do what Eric Prince is talking about? Do you think without, without Russia or China lending aid to these countries that 
somebody like Eric Prince, Eric Prince is not coming right back in there and doing all this shit. Do I feel like the the Russians and the Chinese have pure intentions? Hell no. And I wouldn't, I'm not, that's not what I'm trying to say. Do I think that they're not trying to exploit them? Of course. And, but a, if, if they're being exploited through making a bad deal, that's a whole lot different than somebody who's going to come in with force and force you to take it. It's one thing if you m made a bad business deal. Plenty of us have bought something that we shouldn't have bought. It was a waste of money. We felt like we got screwed over and buying it. That's one thing. It's another thing being held at gunpoint and being told what you're going to do. And that's the difference between the way the West goes into these countries and the way a Russia and China goes into these countries. Yeah, leave the world behind. Mention no one is in control of the U.S. anymore. No one is probably what they call themselves. They call themselves probably no ones. But no, there's there's somebody in control. All of this is definitely being controlled. I mean, we, we alluded to it um, before in, in the interview I had with JB. There are families who are sitting on top of a well-organized uh, machine. When some people say, oh, well, it's just the Masons. Well, it's not just the Masons. It's Masons. It's corporations. It's uh, government. It's Federal Reserve. It's a bunch of different people who are who are tied into the system that make it work the way it works. Just like how, how you have in the military. The Air Force doesn't do everything. Everybody in the Air Force doesn't do all the attacks. Some people are flying the planes. Some people are mechanics on the planes. Some people are logistics. Some people are there helping fly the plane. Some people are there to do um, reconnaissance. Some people go in to pick up down pilots. Same thing with the Navy. Some people are part of the carrier. Uh, some people are on the carrier. Some people are part of the carrier group having all different missions. Some people are air crew. Some people are part of engineering. Some people are part of weapons. Some people are part of sonar. So, I mean, there's all these different levers and systems to make the whole thing work. It's just like it's just like if you look at a motor in a car, it's not just one piece. It, it's pistons. Uh, it's uh, it's fans. It's belts. It's lubricants. It's all kind of different things that go on to make this whole thing work. It's the same thing with the system. There are many different levers to make this thing work. But um, let's smoke something since it's more than two times. So yeah, I mean, it's it's let's let's read what it say. I like to see these scumbags do that to Africa. Um, Africa will another smother song. Oh, <laughs> yeah, smart. Um, says no black commentator ever talks about Africom to read Dr. Umar or new African diaspora news. I'm going to save this comment because I want to come back to it, Chris. That's a great comment. And it's going to go into some of the stuff which I wanted to talk about. Um, Let's see. Uh, Street says, Marcus, if you think someone in this country is in control, explain to me what in the world is going on today. Well, what is going on today is they are working towards certain goals and um, they need a certain amount of disarray and chaos in order for these goals to be achieved. Now. Did I see that? Did I say that the people who are in control of America care about the interests of America per se? Not necessarily. It's just a tool. Um, plenty of people use tools different kind of ways. Some people they pull out their tools, and they use them, and they. I mean, up here, since I since I, I'm more familiar with weapons, let's go into weapons. I could go into tools, but let's go in weapons. It's a better analogy. Somebody might go to the range, go fire their weapon, bring it home, take it apart, clean it nice and well, oil it, reassemble it, put it in a nice case, and then put it up. Some other people might take their gun out and just throw it on their dresser, 
or up under their pillow or something like that. Never clean it, shoot it, and then one day it jams up on them. Different people use tools different ways. And I would argue that the people who have the control in this country are more focused on fighting the enemies of another country. That's where the goal is. And they're about accomplishing biblical goals for said nation. And since prophecy is not on the side of said nation, they're trying to manifest the certain things to make prophecy appear to be manifested. Now, I disagree. Hey, what's up, uh, uh, Warren? Now, I disagree with the narrative. A lot of like some people on the right believe like, oh, well, they're intentionally tearing down America so that they can move the empire to China. I don't buy that for I don't buy that for a half a second. The reason why Western civilization has been able to be the powerhouse has been for 500 years is because of military might. The moment you move that wealth away from the military might, the moment you will be departed from that wealth. Um, so if they ever got rid of their weapon, which is the United States and Western powers, then the countries which have been subservient to you, Russia, China, and many others, now they don't have to be subservient to you anymore. Now, to believe that you're going to be able to move to the Eastern Bloc and they're just going to do it just because you have a lot of money, well, they have a lot of guns. They could take that money from you. So I don't buy the rationale of, oh, they're just going to move it to China and China is just going to be subservient to the West. They're not going to do it if they don't have to. That, But I feel like that's blind spots that some people have. Um, oh, I got to start that one too, Thomas. Great comment. America was cooed over 150 years ago. I would argue that America wasn't necessarily cool. It was a certain, a certain degree of control was never actually real. Um, it's just people who founded this nation kind of preferred to sit back in the shadows. And if you go back through a lot of the people who have controlled many things in, in Europe also, they chose to sit back in the shadows because when they did display their plans openly, they know what happened. They know the consequences of that. And they were foiled. They were stopped. They were imprisoned. They were executed, things like that. And so they have chosen to sit back in the shadows and allow people to sit in the forefront to enact said goals. But now they feel there's a certain level of comfort that is set in that they feel like they can more and more show their level of control, the 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 people who are at the top of this system. Um, that's what I was saying. Hey, what's up, Kaladine? Good to see you in here. Well, that said nation is in the middle of somewhere east. <laughs> Definitely. Either way, the motive is greed. Well, they already have, they already have the wealth. It's not even about greed at this point. It's about power. When you already when you already have enough money, and a lot of times, what do you get the money for? You get the money for a reason. You get the money so you can get stuff with it. If you already have all the possessions, you already have the cars, you have the houses, you have the yachts, you can go everywhere, you can eat whatever you want. What else do you want? Power, control. That's what you truly want. That's what motivates these people all the way at the top. Let's see, American evangelicals literally want biblical prophecies concerning Israel to come true so they can send most people to hell. Well, that's where the, the tie-in comes. 
they want to fulfill it because they believe it. Then you have people who are sitting on the other side of it where they have a different prophecy in their head, but they're all working towards the same ends because they all believe that they're doing what is in the best interest of prophecy, even though they're not on the same accord on what they believe in. Marcus, are you covering any aspects of the migrant crisis tonight? No, not tonight, but I will be next week. That I definitely will be next week because it's a lot of meat on the bones to that. And I'm going to, I got a lot that I want to go into. It was not until after the Civil War and after the disappearance of the 13th Amendment that American Bar Associations begin to disappear and exercise political power. Yeah, because it, if I was on Rockfin, I'd probably be a little bit, I'd probably be a little less discreet. But some of the people who are pushing, uh, are pushing the the funding of foreign policy as of late, um, and money going to certain countries has been going on all the way back into the 1600s. Look back, look back to who was funding a lot of the conquistadors. Look at who some of the conquistadors were. Look to the early early plantations um, here in the U.S. Um, and um, look into the Dutch East Indian Company and the people who are at the tops there. So, um, well, the only reason why I didn't switch over to Rockfin because now the way it's set, it's kind of set like on it's set on this stream is set on premium. So um, I would have to go in and try to change and adjust that. But I think y'all y'all are following for the most part. And Chris, you could always ask me to be more explicit um, in Telegram, and I can go into it there. For those who are not following, we do have a Telegram. Um, yes, by the way, the Queen and her family aren't British. They are Germans. That is correct. She is part of the Habsburgs, um, which you go into them, and that's uh, a royal line family and when i mean royal line family that's going into some of the families which control and move a lot of things i've said before if you guys want to see who are the movers and shakers and controlling and pushing everything that's going on pretty much around the world look no further than people with german or russian descent because when you look back to it all of these people seem to have come out of that part of the world Germany, Russia, Ukraine, that's where, and the most of the world has been caught up in the battle that has went on between the people who have come from there on one side or the other, where they're fighting each other. And basically they turned the whole world into their playground. And it went from like two people who are fighting in one room and now they're fighting across the whole house and tearing up everything. And that's kind of what's going on. You know uh, who our leaders and innovators are, our sons and daughters. We've been shutting them down in the system and that is coming from. Yep. Um, let's see. So, okay. I've hit the Trump, DEI, Eric Prince. And I think I'm, oh, that's right. There was a, let me just double check the rock fin real quick. See if there's any comments over there. Okay. Oh, we do got a couple of comments. Let's see. It says, oh, Laura's hopped in the building. Oh yeah. They're putting a ton of money into charter schools. Yes. Um, back to the Rufo situation. This is, this is what's pushing Rufo. This is what's pushing him in. The Heritage Foundations, the Manhattan, uh, Manhattan Institute, all of these people are putting a lot of money into getting this dude all over the place. And even if you, in fact, I challenge you, look through YouTube or any of these platforms and see if you can find any anything about Chris Rufo that he did before the last four or five years. You won't hear anything. All of a sudden, he just pops on the scene to the national scene all of a sudden out of nowhere. There's no background on him, hardly. I don't know. It, it, that's why I say this dude is completely astral turf. They're like, okay, this guy is smart. He's clever. I look at him as a complete hustler and con man. 
Um, and it, how, just like how people talked about, you know, the Jesse Jacksons and Al Sharpsons, this dude is definitely a race hustler. He's just learned how to do it with dog whistles. What's up, Steve? My brother in the uh, my brother in the house. What's up? Um, Marcus Gates pumped lots of money into charter schools. So did the Walton family. Yeah, all of these billionaires are doing it, and that's where this is coming from. This is all coming from the right. And charter school and charters first took advantage of black and brown communities, and they plan to continue to. See Gregory Walker's over there. Um, what's up, my brother? Yeah, oh, um, we um, I'm gonna hit you up. We're gonna, we're gonna do some do some drinks. Uh, Jeremy Scahill used to do such great work reporting him, but Scahill went off to work for the Intercept. So who knows if he still works with him? Yeah, I just say look into these people, and you will start seeing it. Um. Yes, Laura, I am on uh, YouTube right now also. Um, that's why since um, since for whenever I do these on premium um, on Rockfin, I make sure that I show the whole stream on YouTube. For those people who don't have it, they can be able to hop over there too. Um, so, yeah, all right, I'm caught up, on, caught up with the Rockfin. Oh, and Elise is in here. Good to see you. Kate Hill is like Naomi Klein. I, I, I agree. I mean, and a lot of these people, when you start seeing them get to a certain level because it becomes about the money for them, it, they don't have the integrity to be able to balance it. it. It's rare. It's rare that you can find people who can balance that out. I'm not saying that there's none, that there's plenty of people who do. But when you start getting to that level, eh, it's very far and few between very far a few between um so i guess i wanted to kind of get into my last story um and this last one i wanted to do um kind of a movie review i'll try not to um i mean i'll, I'll probably tell things about well i won't tell what's in it or not i mean i won't I'll try pretty much not to do any spoilers um, on any kind of like scenes outside of anything that was shown in the previews uh, as far as the Bob Marley movie. But I just want to give my thoughts on it first. Um, I had very mixed feelings after walking out of the theater. Very mixed, uh, very mixed feelings. And my mixed feelings about it was. Um, I felt that actually, let me, I can drop him down. Um, actually let's put up a picture of, let's put up a picture of Bob right now. RIP to the great. No, I should stop playing around with this thing. I know it don't like me. So I would put that up there, but yeah, it, well, it's it's hard to try to get crazy. So I'm gonna leave it alone. But um, I, I I the things I liked about it is it's just kind of good to see him on the big screen, and um, he touched so many different people in so many different ways, and was so such a powerful, powerful artist. And he had a powerful message. Um, so I, I liked seeing it and I liked the uh, homage that they were trying to give to him. What I didn't like is I felt it was very watered down. Very watered down. Um, it didn't. It's It's like. It's like as a fam, it's like when you were a kid and your if your father passed while you're at a young age and you only really hold on to the good things you remember. Um, and then the bad things were kind of minimized. Um, that's kind of what they did in this movie. And the minimization of the real things like me, if you're going to make a documentary, let's give the good, the bad, let's give it all. 
I want to know the person, who they were. And I feel like this movie didn't do it. Um, I also felt like they lied and covered up something. This one, I guess it will kind of be a spoiler. Um, but this is, this is anybody, if you know anything about Bob Marley, this has been kind of a so-called controversy that's went on for, uh, for many years. How did he die? How did he contract cancer? How did he get this, um, this melanoma, which went through his whole body that happened to come from his toe? Um, A couple of people said, oh, it's it's from, you know, him playing soccer or football and somebody with the spike stepping on his toe. And that's what led to his foot being infected and then finding, oh, well, oh, he has cancer. Well, but you can say that the cancer was okay his foot didn't heal up because of him possibly having the cancer but why is the cancer in that toe from getting his foot stepped on and if he oh if he amputates the toe then that could have prevented the that could have saved him and then they then there's the oh well but you know later on it, they they wanted to they 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 told him that it, they would have had to if they would have cut off his toe then he couldn't have danced anymore and he didn't want to do that because he still wanted to dance and eh, that sounds like bullshit um and then other ones said well they told him that they should uh, amputate from the hip down okay so you're telling me that. This melanoma cancer happened to be in the foot where he sustained this injury. Where one story is he sustained this injury while playing soccer or football. The other one, which I've seen at least two or three people, one guy saying that he's the uh, a former CIA agent saying he's the one that did it, his personal doctor also saying that. Yeah, he stepped on this, um, and I guess for those who don't know it, I'll go into it. For those that don't know it, I'll go into it. Let me see on the rock band if y'all are caught up onto that part yet. See, Gregory says dot, 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 CIA. Um, so the guy said that, um, he posed as a New York Times photographer, and he gave him a gift of a new pair of um, Converse's. These Chuck Taylor Converse's, it had some kind of a needle in the toe area, and the guy literally said, "Yeah, once he stepped on, once he stepped in there and stepped on that needle, he was done." So that's what happened. That's what this guy attests to. I saw another interview from somebody else who attests to the same thing. His personal doctor, who went along with him through all, uh, who was with him through all this stuff, who went to went over to Germany when he was getting experimental treatments, he says the same thing happened. And now everybody else is like talking like they don't know where the story came from. Now. What they could have been saying is, oh, well, that might have happened, but we didn't think nothing of it. And then later on, he's playing football and the guy steps on it. Now there's cancer running everything. It, it, it don't add up. It, it, even in the documentaries, you're hearing conflicting stories, even though they're not even noticing that they're being conflicting. Another thing that frustrated me, and, and I made this point, I made this point kind of, um, um, kind of when I was talking to JB or no, 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 I didn't make this point. Who said this? Um, John said this earlier that, um, what they did with Marley was kind of what they did with MLK. 
this is like the same thing they did with MLK. This is the same thing they did with Malcolm X. This is the same thing um, that they've done with a lot of different people. Like, kind of like a revisionist history onto who they actually were. Um, this revisionist history, they made, they made the whole Bob Marley about they made this movie made it like his whole life was just about you know one love the 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 song one love can basically sum up his whole entire life that's what they made it like the problem with that is you're completely like ignoring his belief system you're ignoring what a big portion of a lot of his songs talked about. They're even ignoring what his political beliefs were. In the movie, they don't even allude to what happens with the shooting, why the shooting happened. I mean, they loosely do. Everybody should know that he had multiple kids from, uh, had a bunch of kids from multiple women. They barely give you a hint of that. They give you a hint of that and they have an argument in there. That's it. That's right. I said I was trying not to give any spoilers. I'm trying not to give any spoilers. Not, not too many. But I mean, y'all should, if y'all, if y'all know about Bob Marley, if you don't know anything about Mar Bob, Bar Bob Marley, you need to learn something about him. That's my man. That's my man. Um, Tosh went way harder than Bob, though. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, but but Peter Tosh, man, they started out together. And so uh, Peter Tosh was far more. He was far more of a revolutionary. Like he was more on the um if, if if you were calling Bob the Malcolm X, I mean the, the Martin Luther King, then then Peter was the um Peter would have been like the uh the Martin before his day before his uh uh voyage to Mecca, you know, that would have been like the but like what I mean about how they the revision is like they they leave MLK as if I have a dream was it like boom I have a dream it's done there he he didn't have any more political evolution he didn't like change any of his viewpoints he didn't talk about anything else that's what they made it and they said okay this is what we like about Martin this is what we're gonna say Martin's image is now. And they did the same thing with Bob Marley here. They really watered him down. They really like, they make it as if he was just about kumbaya. And he wasn't trying to fight against an unfair and unjust system. That is my problem with the movie. They don't show that. They don't show a big part of who the man was. And I feel that's a tragedy to put the movie on that level and not show it. And the sad part about it is, and I kind of made an excuse for somebody the other day. I said, you know what? Maybe it's the fact of maybe Ziggy and like the rest of the people involved, Rita, they felt like in the documentaries, we've told his story most of his story over numerous times and I can get how they can feel being in proximity to him that maybe everybody all already knew this information but for a younger audience who doesn't know this information I feel like y'all they really missed an opportunity to teach a new generation what he was about and that he should be looked at on the level of a revolutionary of a political activist as a Martin Luther King, as a, a Philip Randolph, as a Marcus Garvey, he should be looked at in those same circles, but he's not because they watered him down as just a musician with one love and that he was about smoking pot. 
that's what I felt. They 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 watered this man all the way down. Just like how Malcolm X, they didn't show how Malcolm X started to have a difference of opinion, how he started to soften some of his views, how he started to look in a very evolved way instead of just looking internally in the black community as in looking into the struggle as far as the people around the feeling, the connection of people around the world who are going through a struggle also against an unfair, oppressive system. And this is the problem with what they did with, with, with this, with this Bob Marley movie and what they've done with all of the civil rights leaders. And I mean, I don't want to see if they have a Mugabe movie. I don't want to see what they'll do with that. I don't want to see how much that they would sanitize a um trying to think of what's his name um down in South Africa. I don't I don't want to see what they would do with um what man, why come Mandela? I don't want to see what they would do with that story. Granted, towards the end, he he became a little bit of a letdown for many of us. I won't say a little bit. He became a letdown for many of us, but it, who he was when he started out, who his wife was, Winnie, why Winnie left him in the first place. I hate how Hollywood takes these powerful, powerful figures and waters them down to nothing. Oh. Yes, war. That's one of my favorite right there. So rebels a good one, bad card, roots reggae. You you can't forget Exodus. Don't you can't leave Exodus off that list, Jira. I'd be ashamed of yourself doing that. Um let's see, one love mark is not Buffalo. So yeah, they didn't they didn't no, they basically made him about one love. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's why. Yeah, Steve. Peter Peter was trying to um Peter Peter was a lot more with the Rastafarian movement. And um uh, I'm not well, I don't want to say like they both weren't strong in the Rastafarian movement, but a big part of why um I said like um I feel like and, and people, some people, especially how the FBA crowd is right now. They would be upset with me for the statement I'm about to say. I feel like people need to talk about Bob Marley with black history. That's the reason why I'm doing it. Um, and I can't think of anybody else who's who's made this connection to Ty. But Bob Marley, his mindset was an empowerment to black people everywhere. Um, and he really, really, really wanted to make inroads with the black community in America, in the United States. That was something that he felt hurt kind of a little bit about that he wasn't able to reach out to them. He felt frustrated when, even though he's sitting up there with, with 50, 60, 70,000, 80,000 people screaming his name, 100,000 sometimes, and that he very, that he very, didn't see very many black people, especially when he came to the shows in America. And he felt like the struggle of resistance that he went through going through uh, growing up in Trenchtown and the struggle. Um, now, I disagree with uh, the Rastafarian movement when they start talking about Haile Selassie and the Trinity and things like that. But overall, how he was talking about a unity and fighting against the system that is oppressing the whole I mean, you could say so-called African diaspora, you know, and he was even trying to make a push in inroads with those oppressed into Africa. Um, and some people will say, oh, well, no, it was just the cancer that he died. The reason why I feel it, there was nothing but motive and the reason why I do believe that, no, the shoe, the, the shoe story is true. And that they did take his, they did take him out, is because the shooting. I believe the shooting 
was motivated by um um by the opposition party um like you had the the basically the democratic socialist uh manly and then you had what was it siega uh what was his name make sure i remember it correctly um I keep forgetting i could just look stuff up on my phone see. yeah edward edward siega that was his name siega was the um uh siega was the right winger um which was tied in with the fbi and cia and so if you guys see that um yep that's the name Jira. if you see that um that 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 scene which they do and they kind of focus on that and they basically end out the last and I'm, okay another spoiler they kind of end out that credit scene ending credit scene of the movie with them doing the handshake of the three of them bob marley stiega and um and and manly oh after you know he came back to the country after living in in europe for for a handful of years pri primarily in in london after after the shooting um his big push he wanted to go to africa and he did he did actually make it to africa he had one concert in zimbabwe um but he wanted to really push and go all throughout africa and i believe that that led to the the, the cia wanting him dead if he would have been able to do what he wanted to do and get that message and start. I'm, I, I don't, I'm not, I mean, like I said, I don't agree with the whole, but the whole Haile Selassie is a reincarnation of Jesus Christ, but about that struggle that he was going through, like a lot of people don't realize the whole dreadlocks thing, which he was doing. That's the reason why some, some Jamaicans get very offended when they see, just random people deciding that they want to rock dreads. Like, I mean, because they look at it as it is for one, it's part of the struggle, but for two, it's part of a Nazarite vow, which is a very like sacred, solemn thing that was um that was within the um the Israelites. So uh, when you guys hear about like Solomon and never cutting it, that he had never cut his hair, that's part of the Nazarite vow. And so without understanding that and seeing people just deciding that they want to rock dreads, especially non-melanated people wanting to rock dreads, it's, 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 yeah, I, I did say Samson, right? I thought I said Samson. Um, but if I didn't say Samson, um, my apologies. Um, that's what I meant. But that's what that whole thing is. And a big part of Rastafarian is understanding their deep religious beliefs and how that was a big center part to Bob Marley and to Rastafarians. And I felt like that was so glossed over in the movie. If, you, if, if, if there's a certain thing no matter what it is, if it's religion, if it's politics, it's or whatever, and somebody makes uh, uh, somebody makes a movie about this person, and they don't talk about the one of the main driving forces of this person, what then what are you doing here? It's like, what if we found out that like, a big part of why Malcolm X decided, or not Malcolm X, why Martin Luther King decided to be a pastor and preach about civil rights is because like. His father like embarked upon him that this is what you need to do, and we never hear this story. Then, what's the point of doing this story if you're not given the aspects of what defined this person, what drove this person? That's how you feel that connection to the people by understanding what motivates and drives them. And I felt this movie was very light on a lot of those things. Um, just. I don't know. Just that's just some of my thoughts. Um, I don't know. What do you, what do you, what do y'all think? I mean, I've done the ranting and raving. Um, let's see. 
Bob was supposed to die in 76 at Smile Jamaica. Yeah, he was supposed to. Yeah, they, they wanted him to die then. They wanted him to die at that concert. And, um, and like for people who want to know, because the movie is not going to tell you what the whole thing was with it. Bob Marley wanted no parts of selecting a candidate, though before in the previous election, he had uh, put his support behind the Democratic Socialist Party. He did not want to, he was not supporting Manly. He, he even said in interviews in his own words, I never supported him. I never will support him. I don't support Manly. Um, but he wanted to have this free concert, basically just kind of a love and give back to Jamaica. And he didn't want it to be political at all. But since it was taken to be political, like he was picking Manly. This is where I feel like the CIA decided to get involved because they knew that that would sway that election. And, and also, I, because they were worried about his influence of trying to build uh, movements with the black communities around the world. Now, keep in mind, we're talking about the 70s here, where there is still heavenly open racism and still a lot of open, hardcore, fervent races were in a lot of positions of power in the government. I'm not saying that there aren't ones still to this day, but I'm saying it wasn't a secret back then at all. Um, Morgan Freeman, or is he dead? No one said burning loot yet. Oh, uh, yep, yep, burning and looting. That's another good one. Um, how watered down would uh, a Patrice? Uh, Lumumba. Oh God, I don't, I don't want them to. T if they do that, I don't. After what I saw, what they did with Napoleon, I, I, I almost don't want to watch any more, um, any more movies that. Are, now I, I get it. It's Hollywood. It's not going to be, it's not going to be a hundred percent accurate. It's not going to be ninety percent accurate. It, but if you can at least get it like seventy-five percent of the way, I can rock with that. But not when you just like and and also like the way they do it in this movie, they take events that happen, but they they don't happen at the time frame that this supposedly happened. They don't happen exactly the way they just kind of threw some like for instance. Um, actually, that's right. So I'm not going to uh, let me let. Like there's a scene in there, something that happens. It didn't happen in that location and it didn't happen exactly the way it said in there. But it did somewhat happen. So there was some truth in how they did some of the different things that went on. But they 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 made it all. They made a lot of stuff happen that did not fit the accurate timeline. Um, um yeah, I don't I, I would love to see them do a Marvin Gaye movie. That would that would be great, but I worry that they'll obliterate. I don't well, I look at it like this. He wasn't a, a political leader. Um so maybe they might not brutalize it too much. Oh, uh, let's see. But yeah, I guess that's my thoughts on that. Um, without starting to go in and talk about specific scenes. Um, let's see. Oh, there were two comments I have starred here. Oh, Chris H said, um, no black commentator ever talks about Africom to read Dr. Umar or African diaspora news. Um, the reason why is because for these people who want to be leaders of the black community and push the black community, they don't understand that you need to be involved in actual movements for the black community and actual lead. That means getting involved legally, sometimes ballot access, things like that, even if it's on a small scale, because we know the system is corrupted. 
but you can get some stuff done on a local level, i.e. permits to be able to build certain things and, and do stuff like that, which these leaders don't do. They get on videos and talk. Um, and that's about it. Um, they don't, they're not trying, these people who claim that they are the leaders and that they're looking for solutions and not really African diaspora, I give them a break because they're just a news channel, but Dr. Umar, Tariq, um, and some of those, those other people, they're the ones who are trying to build a movement, but clearly show that they only know about trying to build so-called black love and, and they're not even really good at that or the unity aspect. And they don't. So I look at their lack of knowledge in improving the situation. I mean, a lot of it just boils down to kind of shallow, shallow attempts at just black unity. It doesn't, it doesn't give real concrete solutions on how to do much of anything. Um, I personally feel like, like the Bible says, uh, um, you will be destroyed <laughs> once you once you are destroyed. They basically won't need to have the chains on you anymore, and the black community has been thoroughly destroyed um, and splintered into a thousand pieces. So, when people talk about black community, what do you mean by black community? What what do you mean? Um, most of the, uh, I'll say most of the black communities have, there's not a community anymore because you got to go and shop at stores everywhere else. There's not a bunch of like, there's everything you, it's not like you can go and get all the stuff you need in the community. You got to go everywhere. So it's not really a black community. It's not like some kind of self-reliant, Oh, you got the, this store there and a black barbershop and a black bullet alley. And you work at a bunch of black owned businesses that there's no black community. So it's kind of a really ridiculous kind of thing. And Black people are, are split into a million pieces, and most of them, have, they make a little bit of money. They move into a kind of diverse neighborhood, and so it's no longer a black community. You just have a lot of the impoverished black people who live amongst a, a bunch of other black people, but that's not representative of most of the black people in America. So, I mean, they're just the the people who are at the bottom of the black community, which conservatives love to rail against. So um, that's my thoughts on that. Um, Chris uh, Thomas says at Chris H, they seem to be drifters seeking followers to feed on their emotions. First and foremost, Umar has some good points. But then again, he goes into weird conspiracies and pseudo history. I completely agree with that. Also, Dr. Umar um, has this mindset of when you go into Pan-Africanism, no, even on the continent of Africa, they don't just say, oh, we're all black together, so we're all good. That's not how it works. You got different tribes over there, and some tribes fuck with other tribes, and some tribes don't fuck with other tribes. They're not even on no Pan-African shit. So how can you as an American walk over there, and you don't understand the history of the beef of all these different people, and think it's just kumbaya because y'all got black skin. That's uh, that's that's a, that's a very ignorant way of looking at it. And I mean, when when you flip it, when you flip it reverse, does every British, Scottish, Irish, um, Dutch do all, do all of them just click up because they all have white skin? No, they're different countries. There's different histories. They fought wars against each other. A lot of them do not see each other as the same people. So when you have this pan-African mindset, oh, we're all the same, it's idiotic. Asian people don't see each other all, as all the same. The Chinese definitely doesn't feel like, I'm exactly the same as the Japanese. And I'm Korean, and me and the Koreans and the Chinese are the same. No, they don't. Only black people in America come up with this thinking. And it's because... You don't, we don't have a history. Many of us have zero history of ourselves or any other cultures. So all we can lean on is complexion. But it said that 
a yoke of iron will be put on your necks until you are destroyed. And we have been destroyed. Some people feel like that that destruction has to come with a physical destruction and you're no longer here. Sometimes it's mental, spiritual. And I feel like a, a lot of the black community has been physically, mentally destroyed. Even some of the ones who are doing well and taking care of themselves, they want nothing to do with no other black people. So are they part of the black community still? No. There are many black people who have so much self-hatred because of what this society has done to them. So, I mean, I, I can go on and on and on and I can really go in, but I'm going to leave it at that. Um Oh, yeah, I'm trying my best to hold it down. Um, I mean, I figure I talk a couple of the topics that I wanted to get into. And I mean, if you really go into the black community, there are so many, so many different subgroups. We all ain't on the same page at all, not even close. Um, so hey, I see Missy hop in here too. Wow, it must be super late where you're at, um, uh, or super early. Yeah, super early. Um, Chris I says, I guess you would have to develop a black nationalist power base in one place first, probably. I've always thought if I was one of these people where I was influential and I could do something like that, and that was my goal, I would um I would try to get together with other influential, powerful, wealthy black people and say, Hey, let's find this town where nobody virtually lives and let's all move there. Oh, wow. Up early. Um, let's all just move there and we can see if we can start building businesses and see if we can get black people to want to move to these areas and build up our own area, whether that be within the U.S. or whether that be in another country. And then you could try to build that self-reliance and build a sense of a community since it's been stripped away and create your own sense of community. Um, and I'm not even saying anti non-black. I'm not saying anti because exactly cat A3, another black wall street, because, um, a lot of people don't realize black wall street wasn't like, yo, you're white. No, you can't shop over here. No, it wasn't like that. It was just, a supporting of other black businesses and anybody's money was allowed to come in and spend. That's not a problem. It was just having a, a city or a town where you were making the laws, you were pushing the legislation independent of somebody sitting over you. I know Conservatives, a lot of times, are people on the right be like, well, this city has a black mayor. Yeah, but that black mayor is at the behest of the party. The party is telling them what they can and they cannot do. Just like with the NAACP, the NAACP is not funded by black people. It was not started. It was started mostly by, as I call them, the uh, the forty eighters. Um, they're the ones who, who put together, you know, they're the ones that put together the NAACP. And so they decided that, um, you are going to, you, you're going to kind of do things at our behest and you'll reel it back when we say reel it back. And if you want to have a place where you don't have to worry about in this town where somebody's discriminating against you because you have dreads or discriminate against you because you have a so-called ebonics type name you you if you wanted to do that building another black wall street building you know and and, and some of the other different names which y'all y'all know about um uh uh what a, a seneca a seneca village you want to build another one of those uh, my mindset was always find a place where it has a very low population and see if you can get a bunch of black people to move there and then start building it up on your own. But um, that's the only problem. You know, Nina, you said um, Liberia and Nigeria were private colonies before they became commonwealths and eventually countries. They were private colonies of white people. My problem is if you go to a place like Liberia, um, like the problem with Liberia is 
it was always going to be under control by some kind of Western power. You're never going to get full independence. But, for instance, if you took over a certain area within the United States, now your vote matters. Because now they got to go through this vote now. I would hate to think that there's a possibility that what happened to Black Wall Street can happen again, which I've always I've always personally worried about, like, yo, you get all the black people in one area, they can come up with like a final solution kind of thing. Um, but that also could be paranoia that I have. Because, you know, of, of the history that we have went through in this country. I don't rule stuff like that out. Um, so, um, always reference. You said, "Why do white people always reference that a black man was the first one to legally own slaves in America? Because they want to try to deflect any blame. That's why. They want to try to minimize chattel slavery. That's the whole goal." Um. So that would that would be um I don't know I guess that's for the most part what I have I don't know if anybody else has any questions let me know but um that would that but my mindset is because and when I look at um what's her name Sukiana and She's literally on TV as a representative, looked at as a representative for black people, and she doesn't even know what a musician is. These are people who are being propped up. And I look at a certain amount of the black community is already destroyed past repair. And so some of those people you got to kind of let go up, fall by the wayside. But also at the same time, when you look at like white people, for instance, white people as a whole are not judged by the people in the trailer park. I mean, if, if if we're being fair, white people, black people, brown people, everybody got their hoods. Everybody got a, a, a what they would call, you know, the rungs of society, the, the undesirables. But for some reason, for black and brown people, we happen to get judged as a whole off of our people who are at the bottom. And I'm just saying, why don't we just keep it fair? But that's all I got for this show. Hopefully, y'all checked out the interview earlier. Um, Chris will be back next week. We will go into talking about some immigration stuff. It's not one of my favorite topics. Um, but I will talk about it. Um, I did hear um, Corey Yu saying some interesting stuff earlier on um, on Wheezy's show. Um, and I'm pretty sure that Chris might agree with some of those sentiments. <laughs> I don't know. I just have a very different view than most people. Um, but um, I guess I can leave it at that. Um, much appreciation for everybody who took the time to be here and join us. Um, Shout out to everybody. I mean, let's see. Who do we see in the building? We had, um, of course, we had John, who was here. We had Streets. Uh, Thomas, Oklahoma. Jira was here. Um, who else? Oz was here earlier. Uh, Trez. Um, who else? Uh, Meteor Dream. Baba. Um, uh, who else? I said Meteor Dreams, right? Thomas, Oklahoma. Um, Chris H, definitely. Um, who else? I feel like I'm missing some people. Yo, Nina, of course, my bad. Um, Hat83, yes, yes. Game.film in the building. Yeah. Steve over there on the Rock Fan. Laura, always good to see you all. Elise. 
Um, Gregory Walker, my man over there. It's always good to see all of y'all. Much appreciation. Um, oh, shout out to Geography Pro um, from earlier. Mr. Streets. Yes, most definitely. And I think I've shouted out everybody. I hope. If I missed you, my apologies. I think I shouted out everybody. Let's see. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I'm good. Oh, yeah, Wesley. My bad. Wesley. I forgot about Wesley in there. A dingo. Yeah, that's right. Dingo popped in here. And Missy. Much love to all of y'all. Thank y'all for... We're coming in here. Y'all could be anywhere else, but y'all decided to be here with me. Much appreciation. Hopefully the topics um, got you all thinking. Hopefully it was interesting. Um, and, um, oh, yeah, if you are not caught on to the Telegram, I do have a Telegram now, or we have a Telegram now. Hop in there. Um, drop in your stories. I mean, I know I'm busy a lot, but... I will try to get in there, respond when I can. Um, what else? I'm going to go put some food in my belly. I haven't ate since breakfast. What was that? Damn, I haven't ate since 10 o'clock. What time is it now? Oh, shit. I haven't, yeah, I haven't ate in almost 12 hours. I probably better put some food in my stomach. Um... Yeah, let's see what else. I think that's all I have. I am going to, yeah, Jira, um, every now and then if I have somebody who can only swing by for like 30, 45 minutes um, and they want to do an interview, I can just, I'll do an interview before the show. Um, But yeah, um, oh, if there is anybody which you guys would like to see come on the show, um. I don't always have access to everybody, but um, uh, y'all can always like bug the hell out of them and tell them, hey, DM Marcus, you know, you know, uh, I'm pretty much pretty much like to interact with everybody. So especially if they're a content creator, definitely have them hit me up. Um, and also um, I am planning something. Hopefully for the summer. Um, if you are a commentator in Florida or if there is somebody you listen to in Florida that I don't already know of, I haven't reached out to, um, tell them to reach out to me. Um, I would like to be able to meet them in person and also want to set up a time where we can meet some of you guys in person. Um, so even if you're not in Florida, um, you know, once I get the date kind of like set in stone, I'm going to let you all know. And if maybe you're close and you want to drive down or, you know, come into town, take your vacation, same time, hang out with us. Cool. Um, I want to do something kind of during the day where it'd be a meet and greet, you know, say hi and people who just want to swing through. And then if people who are still in town, um, I don't know, we go out, go do some, catch some drinks at the club, something. I don't know. We'll figure out something, but um, yeah, if, if you guys are going to be in that area or you live in that area, let me know, hit me up. But that said, this has been a polit political matrix. I am your host, Marcus Young Morpheus Cage, and everybody be safe out there. Take care of you and yours and um, have a good one. Be blessed.